my quad JPY. I mean, I can call it whatever I want. I'll give it, give it a name that means something to you. Click OK. Now, once I've done that, notice that here it is down here at the bottom of the platform. That's my current profile that's open. Now, let's say I make the same thing for the Euro US dollar. I'm going to go ahead and drop the Euro US dollar on all four charts. And I want to save a Euro US dollar profile. Again, File, Profiles, Save As, and then I can call this Quad EUR. And I save it. Now, notice, now here at the bottom, my current profile is showing the Quad Euro US dollar. So at that point, what would be best to do if I want to scroll between the different profiles that I've created. And by the time I'm done, I, I like to look at the Euro US dollar, the, the dollar yen, the cable, the dollar Swissy, the dollar Canada, the Aussie, the Kiwi. I like looking at the uh, Euro yen. And sometimes if I'm feeling sporty, <laughs> maybe the pound yen. Okay. Now notice if you want to change the list order, and the priority of the symbols that you like. If you notice, all I did is I clicked on it, keep your mouse button down, and just drag it. So click on the symbol you want to move, keep your mouse button down, and just drag it. So if I wanted to put the cable underneath the euro, I keep my mouse button down and just drag it. So I can change the order here. Okay? So if I want to jump back to that quad dollar yen profile, if I click this, It'll open a list, It'll be a drop-down menu list, and my quad JPY will be in that list, and I can just jump to that profile. Now, again, I, I highly recommend you create a number of profiles. Depending upon the trading strategies and the pairs that you have, you might have very different profiles. I have a five-minute strategy that I use quite a bit, so I have a five-minute profile that I'll jump to when I, when I need to look at it. Okay? So when we start looking at ideas for trending and non-trending markets, which will be our, I believe, our fourth presentation, I'll, I'll get more into the different profiles and the different setups that I've got. Let me address a few questions here, and we'll, we'll continue on. All right, so in terms of the first question here, you all have my email address, rangi.horner and ibfx.com. Okay. Um, the high-low is for what time period? I believe it's for the day. I believe it's for the session. Again, the high-low is for what time period? I believe, again, it's for the session. The fonts. Good question. As far as I know, and I'm with you there, I don't believe fonts can be changed. Now, I could be wrong about that. I've asked a lot of different people. I haven't heard any answer in the affirmative that these things can be, of course, I'm sure, like me, uh, you want this thing to be larger. I don't believe that's something we can do now. Now, I may be wrong. There's all sorts of um, things even I learn about this platform. When There's such a huge community out there. There's even things I learn about the platform as I, uh, as I get deeper into the community, which is what's a great thing about this platform. There's so many people out there creating EAs and custom indicators and new scripts. It's really exciting. Uh, this, is, this is anything but a stagnant platform. It's really just a very alive platform. So no word on that right now regarding fonts. As far as the spread, I believe, and, and don't uh, quote me on this, and maybe I'll make sure I bring up, there's a, there's a page within the IBFX website. And, and perhaps if you want to drop me an email, um, I'll be happy to send it to you. It's, it's this whole page of analysis about uh, pricing and spreads and so forth that uh, IBFX actually makes available. And I don't know of anybody else, again, I'm not quite sure, but I don't know of anybody else who actually makes this information uh, public like this. So... I'm, I don't remember the link, but if, if you do want to drop me an email, I'm sure I've got it bookmarked uh, somewhere, and they've got that information. But, of course, you can look at the, the bid and ask as well right here on your platform. Okay. And, actually, that's a great question to kind of introduce our next topic, which is, which is uh, delving into order entry and some tips and tricks there. Okay. 
So let me just bring up an order entry ticket. And of course, there's the button for it. There are many shortcuts, by the way, keyboard shortcuts. Um, but if you guys are anything like me, your fingers probably aren't on your keyboard all that much unless you're typing in a URL to go to a website. If you're anything like me or anything like most traders I know, um, a lot of us are just kind of mouse, mousing people. I mean, even if you're going to manually enter something with the keyboard, you've got a mouse there to begin with. So um, I, I prefer to, to kind of lay off the keyboard. Sometimes I'll even move my keyboard off my desk because it's wireless and I really rely on my mouse. Or Actually, I use a trackball. So uh, while there are a number of shortcuts, um, to me, I, I like having the, the ability just to click. And you can see there, new order button, new order ticket. Okay. Uh, referring back to the question about the spread, again, you can, you can see literally, not just in price, but visually, which is really nice, uh, the spread there with this little tick. Okay, you can also see the tick chart, by the way. If you notice your market watch window has two tabs, you notice your tick chart is also available here. But here you actually see where you're buying, where you're selling, where the bids and the asks are. All right. Okay, so let's talk about a few, a few other things. Uh, let's get into the order entry. And uh, actually, before I do that, let me just explain a few other things that I use a lot uh, as far as some of these icons up here. For those of you that aren't chart shifting at all, this red arrow, this chart shift icon, is very handy because if you're one to put, say, pivots or Fibonacci on your chart, you're going to need a little room along the hard right edge here for the information of the study. And the chart shift allows you to basically indent from the right uh, a certain amount, and you can, you can actually dictate that with this little caret by sliding it left and right. You can actually dictate how much of a chart shift you're going to have. Okay. I don't usually keep the chart shift indented unless I've got a Fibonacci or some sort of study that needs this area to the right. Uh, one button I usually have almost always depressed is the auto scroll. This makes sure that if you, for whatever reason, start scrolling back and forth through your charts, that when you're done, at some point, it's going to click back to most current data. Okay, this will keep the auto scroll and it's going to, you know, it's going to go ahead and jump you to the hard right edge at some point. Or you can also use the chart shift to get back there. But a lot of times, if you find yourself scrolling left and right through your chart, sometimes you'll forget. I've done it. Sometimes you'll forget to put yourself back to the current price action. The auto scroll basically ensures that at some point it'll jump back there. Of course, we have the zoom in and zoom out. I'll be talking in detail about how much data to keep in each window. Uh, that's something that I have very specific ideas and, and strategies for. I call it the market memory or look back, and we will absolutely be covering that. Just remember, um, gang, um, this is just kind of getting to know the platform because everything we're going to do from here on out is going to be built upon our ability to, to use this platform to not only analyze the market but communicate with it. Okay, this is, this is, our, this is our connection to the market. If we can't utilize this platform right, if we can't navigate through it correctly, our ability to communicate our, our ideas is going to be severely hindered. So, again, that's where we're spending some time getting some basics out of the way. All right. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I can't wait to get into the, the more advanced stuff that we're going to be doing in the following weeks. I'm completely stoked for that. And, by the way, since you all did attend this very first presentation, you guys kind of get to help me do a little bit of planning because one of the things that I was going to also invite you to do is... Feel free to drop me an email if there's a particular topic that you want me to discuss. I mean, you already have the topics in the overall month-long series, but if there's a particular topic that you want me to discuss or a question you want me to address, you guys are my first group, and you get uh, the privilege of that is you get to shoot me over an email. So while I'm, while I'm designing the rest of the presentations, I can have your ideas and your comments in my mind while I'm doing so. So uh, it'll benefit to, to being at the front of the class, right? Okay, so the chart shift uh, triangle, I'll absolutely go over that again. Let me, uh, 
go through some more questions here, and then we're going to get to the order entry ticket, which is remarkably easy because there's some really quick shortcuts that, that the 